Rogacci, and I am a uh, writer and philanthropist and fine art photographer. With my husband Michael, we are trying to create very many various projects, all of them preserving eternal light of Jewish heritage. That's why Hanukkah is so special for us. I'm very happy to tell a little bit about myself and my family and my husband. My family has a very long story. Um, it comes from as far as Toledo in Spain on my father's side. It goes through France, Germany, Poland, Krakow, and goes to Lithuania, and then it gets to Ukraine. On my mother's side, uh, it starts from Poland, Krakow, goes to Lithuania, going to Western Belarus, uh, nearby um, place when um, Mark Chagall was born, and then goes to Ukraine, where my parents met. And my mother was a legendary teacher, and my father was a very talented engineer. And we lived very modest, very warm Jewish life. My grandmother was a legendary cook, and she kept the house warm and inviting. And uh, uh, I met my husband, Michael, uh, in, uh, at, at Dnipropetrovsk University. And then soon after we went to St. Petersburg, which used to be uh, called Leningrad then. And he switched into theater uh, soon after, and we both used to work in very good, big, interesting, best at the time in Soviet Union. Then tragedy happened to our life. Our daughter contracted cancer um, because of Chernobyl, because my parents still lived there and she visited them. And um, thanks to our many dear friends in culture and theater, uh, we were able to get to Finland to treat him. And the story, this is a story of itself, and I wrote a book about it. It's called My Finnish Family, because it was a book. I'm interested in history and people, and that's my main subject. And both my husband and I are very active in um, philanthropy. Also, I think we wanted to do something special and new, and when a human being is, is asking himself what, what he is living for, what legacy he would like to, to, to leave behind him, I think that um, we always, both of us, are thinking about new, talented, original, creative, and special. And this all we would like to, and trying to, to reflect in our art, but also in our philanthropy, which, which is sort of inseparable thing for us. Both philanthropy and art goes together for us. This is Leah, and Leah her prophecy. She knew that she was the predecessor of King David.
This is Devora, one of seven prophets. I want to show her cleverness, her, her power, her understanding, and her strength. This is a uh, work called Hidden the Book. It's because the book is a very, very, very important part in the whole Jewish life, from the beginning to the end. And it, it, uh, I, I showed you this mostly in my childhood, when I see how my grandfather, how he was guided this book. How we can take care of our book. And we have an enormously big library. And all our life was connected to books. Now this is Lullaby. This is a portrait of my mom. And I make it because I remember uh, the Yiddish song about small, small, small hood, which my mom sent to me before I go.
tell you about my project, The Root. Here is a map which I developed. The map is about root, about the way, historic way of Jewish people throughout centuries uh, from Israel, number one, uh, going to be uh, going to, to Spain, Portugal, be expelled from there, going to Italy, going to France, Germany, Poland, uh, Prague, uh, being on the way to Amsterdam and London, uh, going throughout all Europe, uh, coming to Central Europe, Poland, uh, Lithuania, and coming as far as Finland and then returning back to Israel, both literally and metaphorically. My father, Isaac Boyanover, was a very talented engineer and a very well-read person, as everybody in our household. But he also, most and foremost of all, he was a very keen photographer. And when I was young, since I was five years old, he was not only photographing with me and me and everybody, but he was he was teaching me, he was telling me about, about it and showing me and telling a lot of details. Till today I still have his handwritten manual, the small yellow book, and he, he was just written all kinds of exponents and all kinds of those things. And, um, but then I didn't photograph professionally for many, many, many years. And then uh, about seven, eight years ago, I was... I just felt that it's probably time. I started to see things differently. I started to remember what my father taught me. Uh, and I, I started to want to do it. And I do since, since then. So I'm, I'm just keeping his, his lessons alive, I, I imagine. It's all started in Jerusalem. Then our people went to Spain and Portugal. From where we were expelled and we went to Italy. Austria, Netherlands, England, France, Poland, Czech Republic, Germany, Scandinavia, and then back to Jerusalem. Arts Against Cancer has, uh, has been an idea of my husband, Michael, uh, and it happened uh, in, in the end of 80s. Our daughter got contracted cancer from Chernobyl, and after Chernobyl catastrophe, she visited our parents in Ukraine, she, uh, and Chernobyl had an effect on all, all over Ukraine and in the way how river flew 
from Chernobyl down. Uh, it was concealed from public. Nobody knew about it. Otherwise, we would never let our daughter visit visit her grandparents there, as many many thousands of others. So she contracted a very heavy cancer, a very rapidly progressing one, and um, say, and we tried to save her. What what happened to, to our family, and how we, we uh, was um, how we were um, uh, did from a lot of different people, it's really different people, Jewish, non-Jewish, professionals, not professionals, scholars, not scholars. So we came down to Finland for her treatment and met there with extraordinary understanding, help and support. When our daughter uh, got treatment for cancer, also she was not safe, but uh, Finnish society at all and every level provided us with extraordinary support, help and love. And been seeing it, we, oh, Mark, Michael, Michael decided to have the idea of establishing a charity, international culture charity. Our daughter was still alive at that moment and she was our partner in this so. And um, so that's how it started. We were supported by very many leading public figures, artists, all over the world, all of them having a cancer story in their family. So the marriage of thoughts between um, people who were big in art and public life and their charitable inspirations and charitable thinking and, and willingness to do so brought a very good result. We make just collect money for action. For, 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 for some precise charity, we pick up some most, most need, needed uh, person or, or institution and collect money for them and deliver it. There's some medicine, some doctor's help, some connections with other doctors, uh, like this. And we was involved in collecting money for uh, uh, educa educational program for doctors and nurses in uh, who working in uh, with cancer so for patients. Secondly, after ten years of this activity, we decided to little bit switch our attention and um, establish our foundation, which is called Ragachi Foundation. Priority of this foundation is uh, education, uh, tradition, keeping keep tradition, education, and um, more and more values. We try to help orphan orphanages in uh, Ukraine. It's Jewish orphanages for girls and the boys. With Jewish um, uh, children museum in New York, very good connections. And just uh, again around the world, we just been working for different projects. And we just uh, try to uh, exp explain to the children about the uh, importance of uh, education because in, uh, nowadays it's very, very important. Philosophical concept, uh, which and, and terms and, and substances uh, which influence my life and the life and art of my husband, I, I imagine. Also, not only like artists, but as Jewish people, and it comes from from our Jewish faith and uh, knowledge of Torah and and the knowledge of our coming from our sages and. Um, it came as um, light has come as the most important proponent uh, in my art. Because as an artist I, I do not believe in cynical art. Neither do I believe in what I call mockery, 
working art. Um, I believe in that art should inspire and give hope, and what can give more hope than light. And um, so, light is the most important proponent for me in my art, and that's why I based my uh, look, say, photo art concept on that. Before it's uh, it's. Um a direction of uh, art photography which is focuses on uh, producing uh, pieces of art which are uh, providing psychological comfort to people in hospitals and clinics and in all kinds of medicine uh, establishments. In Finland uh, there is um, a Finnish society, oncology society, and uh, the society is having uh, hospitals, hospices, uh, rehabilitation centers, and those people are responding very well about uh, on the collections. And also, as I know, that Spanish anti-cancer society exploit my work for psychological comfort of their patients. Japan, UK, uh, and now we're talking with Boston. And um, this light sustains us. And also, uh, you can see, one can see it in my work and in, in, in Michael's work, that light comes comes out as a very active element. It, it, it's very uh, special role that light has in, in our both life, uh, lives and, and art. And um, it's always different. It's uh, uh, in our works and, and it's always active and it makes it in Michael's work, in my work, it just make um, it's finalize it. it. It's the most important element. Yeah. Capturing light, it's a very difficult thing and it's it's uh, more than one can see. It's when you yourself become hopeful because of things that you probably don't even understand at this very moment when you're doing it. And when you became confident, and when you become aspiring. And, um, and also, it's a lot of joy. When you feel in this joy, uh, and you know that it's light, it could be inner light as well. It could be light which is postponed, which you, you're hopeful. But very often, this is light which coming off of positive attitude under very daring circumstances. Think it over and over and over again. And I put together all the details. I just construct, actually construct in my mind, inside me. Uh, what I try to do in my, my art, I try to put many, many, many as possible uh, different components in our life in our vision, in our understanding. And to be much more metaphorical, 
And this is one part. Another part, uh, when you try to put your soul in the, in the picture, is with deep understanding, that I start to think about it, what I see. That's another point. And third, to find an uh, artistic solution. This is a final solution. When I start to make this piece, I was absolutely sure how it should to be. Because I imagine in myself just absolutely empty street in the shadow or in small city. Nothing left, only broken glasses and facility. It is a Jewish quarter in Krakow. And I make it in almost 
near to Hanukkah. And it was uh, one place with many, 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 many glasses and few candles. And reflection of these candles just fill whole, whole, whole uh, volume, whole place. And when you see, you just start to understand what it's mean Hanukkah, what it's mean light, what it's mean life. It's so, it's so, so place where it's mostly whole Jewish population was uh, eliminated, exterminated. The candles represent life, light, hope, joy, and now life comes back. With light, with joy, with good synagogue, with good people, with good kosher brashtan. For the 65,000 Jews that was killed, yes. Austrian Jews, and one mm -hmm. of the sculptures. Yes. June 1995, I would like to ask you how Simon Wiesenthal celebrated the 50th anniversary of the end of the war. What was your impression? You know, when people ask me to take part in the celebration, 50 years of the end of the war, naturally I survived. But in a such moment, I was thinking about all these people, they had not survived. Especially, they was with me and the dead block in Mauthausen. And I was one of the speakers, uh, for the Chancellor, the Minister of Interior, the uh, Governor of Upper Austria and I, in Mauthausen with four thirty thousand people. It was coming from all the world. And I was the only one bet between, the, between the speakers that was uh, in Mauthausen, that was my last camp. And at that time, uh, when they bring, when I was coming from Buchenwald, and before Buchenwald, I was only three days in Auschwitz, on the railway station, they had not accept us because they had not space. And maybe through this I remain alive. But in the last year I was in 11 camps. Mm. And then when I was coming to Mauthausen, on the way from the railway station to the camp, they killed 180, they could not walk. This was February 45. And then they bring us and the camp doctor uh, look on the people and select me to the dead block. And in the dead block, I, I survive through a miracle. We receive only um, one soup during the day and a small piece of bread, maybe maybe 50 grams. That was everything. I survived and what was the miracle? And uh, a week later, I was coming February 7th, in the middle of February. They call in our block, we was 1,500, 800 in one part of the block and, and uh, 700 in the other part. 
And the other part was people, they receive a soup one, once in two days, because that was dying people. They asked somebody um, who can make uh, drawings. Okay, and I was on the third block and I th say I. Then they told me, come down, coming down. And he say, our, um, the head of our block will have in a week his uh, birthday. And we wish to make for him uh, something nice, mm -hmm. a drawing that we can, uh, oh, the functionaire that they can sign it. I say, okay. I can make it, but I have nothing. I need paper, I need a pencil, and so, and I make it. And for this, they gave me 10 days, a half soup more. And then from my other blog was coming people that I should sign something and they bring me bread. And at that time, I was thinking about I should make something that remain after me. Let me tell you about one of my uh, paintings. It's called The Rain, which I, um, I painted it for, for Simon Wiesenthal, and I uh, give it to him. And it is a way of our, our souls and inner, inner, inner light which is staying in every Jewish soul. They are walking through millenniums, they are walking through destinies, they are walking through life to meet the light of uh, Creator. He loves this period of waiting very much and he put it in his study on the roof and he always look at us. And now these paintings belong to Simon Wiesenthal family. And this is light of our memory. We see little candle in reflection in uh, my eye. And I made this using special effect. So in any place where you go, you see that those eyes, our eyes of this memory, always for full beauty. And this is light of our memory. With my husband, Michael Ragacci, we are living our life interwoven uh, arts and philanthropy in it for many years, for, half, for, for 25 years by now. Uh, we would like to share uh, as many of, of our projects with as many people as possible, with children, with adults, with Jewish, non-Jewish people. Uh, we are thinking and doing uh, on many various uh, projects rooted in our history, in our heritage and also we would like to, to introduce uh, more light in this life or to this life 
Uh, light for us, for both of us, light is the main concept of Judaism and the main concept of worthiness of one's life. So not surprisingly Hanukkah is one of the most important and special miraculous but also very aspiring moments for us always from our childhood. So in each of our projects we would like to introduce and to keep uh, this light, eternal light of Jewish heritage and we are very very happy and willing to share it with as many of people as we possibly can. What I would like to say uh, to young artists or people or children or teenagers who would like to be artists, that it's not just fun. You should to be very good educated, you should to learn a lot, and it's very, very, very hard work, unstoppable. Around the world. All the, all the time you should to think about what you should to do, what, how you should to do, about what you should to make something, and be in constant, uh, constant um, working uh, regime, regime. Without it, is nothing, nothing to become. Without it, you become could be just ordinary noble. Amateur. If you would like to be amateur, okay, it's your problem. But don't call yourself an artist. I'll tell, I'll tell you one story. When I was some 12, 13 years old, we have a company. It's very talented guys. Uh, um, very good artists, very good uh, mathematicians, very good uh, uh, chess players, sportsmen. But we have some, some small, small circle. And everyone of us try to make sketches, try to, try to draw, draw, try to do it. And we will have some exercises. Four or five of us go out, out, out and follow some, some person and try to construct his outlook from his back. So we put absolutely just attention and very, very attention and look at him. How, how he is moving, how he is looking at here, here, here. And using just small knowledge of our anatomy, we start to try to construct how he is looking at from, uh, from the floor. How he knows, do he have glasses, what kind of uh, uh, glasses, uh, where is the situated glasses. And then somebody, somebody start to be very, very scared because five guys are following to you on the street. And then after that, one, one of them just, just running at the front, look at you and make some strange movement to, 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 to another guy. So some, somebody they turn to us and said something. Somebody start to jump. Somebody asked, guys, what are you doing? And we try to explain. Okay, that's good. This, this is how, 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 how we, were, we were working how we were working. It was good, good school for, for me. Then, when it got to, to our foundation, the Ragachi Foundation, which we founded in 2004, we thought a little bit further on. We thought what is the most important thing in the world in general, uh, so to bring children right. But we're also uh, looking very much to help orphans, and especially Jewish orphans in Ukraine, so we are patronizing to uh, orphan, small orphanages for boys and for girls there. So how to do it? To, it means educate it and also to <coughs> introduce them uh, moral values that we believe are right ones and, and, and those who are moral values we, which are based on, on the humanity, mankind, history. And in the, so that to, 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 to infuse children with the right set from where they will, will be going on from right background, from with spirituality, which is a very important thing. 
because when you see people without spirituality, you can see a big difference in their attitude to life, how they do live their life, how, how they are feeling. Indeed, there is situations so people with faith and with, with spirituality are surviving morally uh, far stronger than the other one. arch of uh, Hurva. This painting I make exactly 20 years ago. Now this painting in the um, Yerushalayim Municipal Museum. I will ask, and uh, this was my honor, uh, honor to give it to, to this painting to, to, to this museum. And 20 years ago, I even do, could, couldn't re imagine that all this beautiful synagogue, Kurva, will be uh, restored. Next day in Jerusalem, it's also for my childhood. Uh, it's about my mom, about our family. This is the Western Wall. This is a symbol of our strength, of our hope, of our life, of our country. Thank you. 